despite having a successful month where I made three things that I really love, I struggled this month. I have to be honest with you. Has that ever happened to you where you just struggle to find your joy and your passion? And I realized what it was. It didn't take a lot of thinking. And it was, I was letting my YouTube channel interfere too much with my sewing. And I was not enjoying it as much. I did three tutorials this month. I did the sew along with the hoodie. I did a cam snap press tutorial. And I've got one that's coming up on Sunday where I did it on knits. Now I love teaching and that was something I set as a goal for myself, but I don't love filming three tutorials in a single month because it takes a lot more time. I am definitely not a professional videographer. So there are takes and retakes and takes and retakes, the editing, and it was really sucking the joy from my sewing. When I took last night to look at what did I really need, I was doing some packing. I needed a pair of slacks. I made my saguaro pants and I couldn't wait to make another one. It's something I needed. I liked the style. I wanted it. I wasn't trying to film it. So that was a lesson learned for me, was to not let something else interfere with what it is I'm doing. I do enjoy sharing my makes with you. I do enjoy doing tutorials, but I need to be careful that I don't let YouTube channel take over my sewing room. Do you have anything that's interfering with your sewing? And it doesn't have to be YouTube. I mean, we all have our distractions. And I needed to find my joy and I found it again. So first I want to talk about the clothes. I'm wearing the pearl cardigan by Tilly and the Buttons and I love this. Could I say I adore it? Yes, I could. I sewed it in the stretch waffle knit from Minerva, linking it below. And I love the color. I love the fit. I've already said, I was surprised how much I'm enjoying this crop waist. It is more flattering than I thought it would be. I have paired this with the Sabina skirt, and today I am wearing with the Saguaro pants by the Friday Pattern Company. I know I am late to that party. I'm trying to be a little bit more of an early adopter and jump on some of those new patterns that I think I'm gonna love sooner rather than later. I sewed these pants last night. They are quick, they are easy, and they are pretty fantastic. It's a very high waist on me. I'm 5'4", and when Charlie comes home, I'm gonna see if he'll take some video footage so you can see the movement in them. The waist on me comes up to here. So that is a lot past the belly button. I wanna say a good four and a half, maybe five inches on me and I don't mind it one bit. It makes me more willing to try some crop tops. And you know your love a make when before I hemmed it, I had it all pinned, I went and started trying on different things in my wardrobe to see what could I wear with it. And there are a few things I wanna to alter to wear with it. And I'm gonna talk about them in a minute. Love the pants. It is a very wide leg pant. I sewed it in this cotton double gauze for Minerva, and I didn't have quite enough. So you'll see, I used a different fabric for the waistband. It's still a blue double gauze, and I figured that would be okay to do that, especially since I'm always gonna have it covered up. But if I were to wear it with something tucked in the front, then it would look intentional, and it wouldn't look like I just didn't have enough almost enough, two and a half yards, and I could get everything but the back waistband. I'm going to be going to Miami for a sister trip with all five of my sisters. So the six of us, Miami, watch out here, where we go. And I thought, you know what? A saguaro pant would be perfect for travel. 
and the double gauze would be great. I wouldn't have to worry about wrinkle, easy care. So I'm gonna be wearing these on the airplane there and coming back. And it was like getting a little gift yesterday. You know, you watch people and they have their happy mail and they're opening up new things. I felt like I had a happy mail moment yesterday. I was wanting these saguaro pants and I thought, great, I'm going to trace them out. I'm gonna cut them out and get on with it. And tracing and cutting the pattern are not my favorite tasks. I opened up the envelope where I'd stored the pattern and lo and behold, I was able to thank previous Christine because I had traced, cut out the pattern and I just hadn't made it up for whatever reason. I don't know. I ran out of time. I got diverted into sewing something else, but I was thankful and that made these a really, really quick sew. So let me tell you what I think I'm going to wear with it. So I went through my closet to see what did I have? What could I wear with it? I could wear my sagebrush top and I think I'm going to pack this for my trip. I think it looks okay, only because that's not my best sewing job. When I cut out the top, I was at my parents' house and I was cutting it out on the floor and so the arms are a little bit funny because I had to make it work. And whenever you make it work, it's not the best thing, usually. The Cielo top or Cielo top by Closet Core, that looks really great with the sagebrush. My Donnie shirt, I am definitely taking this to Florida and wearing it with my saguaros. And the Friday Pattern Company square neck top might be my favorite look to pair with the saguaro pants. Now, I think I am going to modify this and I might do this tonight. We'll see. Modifying is not one of my favorite things either, but I think I will wear this much more. I lengthened the top because I wanted to tuck it in. And I'll say it's okay, mainly because of the fabric. This fabric is not the greatest, so I might as well chop it off to the original length and hem it. And I think this looks fantastic with the saguara. Now, when we talked last Friday, I said that I was going to be trying on different things in my wardrobe to see why was I not reaching for him? And I pledged that I would try this, another sagebrush top to see why wasn't I reaching for it. And interestingly enough, I did not even want to reach for it to try it on. And I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just kick that out of the closet because if you don't want to give it a try, that's sending a strong enough message. I don't need to try to pair it with something if I just don't want to put it on. But I did, in the interest of science, I tried this on and I know why I don't wear it. The sleeve is just a little bit much in this cotton lawn. Had I taken some of the volume out of the sleeve, I think I would wear it. I do love the ruffle, which surprised me the first time I made one of those. Being large chested, I thought, oh, that's probably not going to work for me. But it, it, it does, it does. It's right in just the right place to look super cute. I'm not wearing it. I'm not gonna wear it. I can't be bothered to take the sleeves out and take the volume out and reduce the casing and all the things that would go into making this work for me. But I'm gonna ask my sisters and see if any of them would like this. If they don't, I'm gonna donate it. Back to the makes for me. This is my Pogo Net Pillover by the Friday Pattern Company. This was my first make of 2024. I finished this on the third. I do love it. I know I've been raving about it. It is a great pattern. I love the fit. I love the oversized nature of this in that I can wear something underneath it and really stay warm. I sewed it in this heavy French terry with very little stretch. I think it makes it look really cute, but it's also not the most practical make for me in South Carolina. I have been wearing it every time we've had a really cold day. We don't have a lot of them. Do I regret it? Nope. 
No, I don't. I am so happy with this make. Now, it looks like the placket is slumping a little bit, and that's only because it's on the hanger. When I wear it on my body, this does not fall down. Love my Pogo Net Pullover. Very much recommend that. I mentioned that I said several things for the little people in my life. My niece is going to be 12 in April, and I sewed her the Brindle and Twig Raglan hoodie. It is their big kid version. They have two free patterns on their website. I've sewn both of them. Excellent pattern, and she loved it. I don't have any photos of her wearing it, but I do have a photo that I'll insert of the hoodie. I did a sew along for that hoodie and gave some really great tips on how to easily make it with a nice finish. Having had her try it on, I do think I would change some things in sizing for the next time. Now, Brindle and Twig has excellent sizing information in their pattern. All my little people live far away and it's not always easy to well, you feel like you're pestering the parents sometimes, um, and if they don't sew some of the detailed measurements, you may not get the right measurement anyway. So I do a lot of guessing, and also sometimes I like to make it a surprise, especially if I may or may not make something. I don't want to be all, hey, I'm bringing you a hoodie, and then eh, didn't have time to make it. So anyway, she loves it. I found that many of the brindle and twig patterns come up short in the torso and the sleeves definitely short. My niece is probably of an average size height wise for an 11 going on 12 year old. I lengthened it to a 14, which is good. It'll give her a little room to grow in, but I think the 12 would have been a better fit for now. I added two inches to the sleeve, and I am very glad I added those inches to the sleeves. Definitely needed more length on the sleeves. So the next little items I sewed were leggings for my granddaughter who is due in the spring. I filmed a tips video for sewing with knits. I think that knits can be great for a beginner sewist as long as you have the right techniques and the right tools and it doesn't have to be expensive. I sewed these absolutely adorable lightning leggings out of scraps. I went into my scrap bin and I didn't pull out big scraps. I looked for some really little scraps and in some cases used two small scraps in order to make these. This is a size three to six months. I know, aren't they so tiny? And I used them while I was filming my tips video and I thought, well, while I'm doing this, let me do a sew along for the pattern. So if somebody has no experience making leggings and is an absolute beginner, it can give them a little bit of help. And I sprinkled tips throughout that video and that video is coming out on Sunday. But I'm just so pleased with them. I did put a tag in. That way, when my daughter-in-law hands them off to one of her friends when the little baby is finished with it, they'll know what size it is. Super adorable, really happy with that. Are you a big planner? In my work life, I am very much a planner, all about smart goals, all about getting things done. But in my creative life, no. <laughs> I tried to plan a year and a time and it just didn't work. I threw that out the window in 2024 and I was gonna do seasonally. That hasn't worked. I think I'm just gonna take it month by month and just be happy with it. I will be looking ahead a little bit and I've done some of that. I have in my mind some things I wanna do as we approach spring and then approach summer, but I'm super happy to just go one month at a time and to be flexible with it, because this is my hobby. Now, I do need to remember and reflect back on what it is that I'm wanting to make. What do I need to make? And I think that's why some type of planning is working for me. Do you work off a plan or are you a so in the moment? 
Some of my favorite makes have been so in the moment makes. So for January, I did plan to make the pearl cardigan, the pogo nip, and the hoodie. I had specific plans for making a Rowan tee by Misuzu Patterns for my grandsons. Didn't do that. I couldn't find the pattern. I looked and I looked and I thought, as soon as I send off to have that printed, I'm going to find it. And part of the reason I chose that free pattern to sew was I did want to do a sew along for it, but also I have this great big bin of off cuts, scraps from knit projects that have sewn for myself. And I wanted to reduce that. It's, there's no point in saving all those scraps if you're not going to sew them. And I thought, okay, Christine, let's get your button gear and let's sew some of those up. So I swapped out the Rowan T when I couldn't find the pattern for the lightning leggings. And it did meet the spirit of the goal, but I didn't use up a whole lot of fabric. I'm talking just little, little, little pieces to make those leggings. So it is a good scrap buster in that you can use some fabric like that art gallery fabric with the gray with the camellias on it. That was an expensive fabric and I was able to use some up on those tiny leggings instead of throwing it out. So even though I don't have formal plans for February, I have some definite ideas. One of them is I want to do a toil or a muslin for my Easter dress. I do not want my Easter dress to go the same fate of the Christmas dress that was never sewn up. I think I need to start on it in February and I want to make the Maya Sotis dress. I absolutely love the version that Teresa from Lost My Thread sewed and then T from Crumpets Tea and Sewing also served a beautiful one. The other plan I have in the back of my head is to use that gorgeous fabric that Michelle from Michelle Sews Again dyed for me. I have been waiting for the right project to use that because I know that she spent a lot of time making that and she put a lot of thought into dyeing the fabric to my colors, which are very different from her colors. It was so sweet of her to gift this to me. I want it to be the perfect project. And sometimes we can let perfect get in the way of complete. I do have a project that I think will be gorgeous for this. And I think that's gonna happen in February. I'll let you know more when I get back from my vacation.